Inside the Intervals, episode 7. Welcome back, guys, to the podcast. Here with your host, Chris B. Yes, we are back. Just wanted to say, first and foremost, uh, f- Merry Christmas, even though Christmas has passed. I just want to say Happy New Year. And um, as you know, it's New Year's Eve tonight. So whatever you're doing, just make sure you enjoy it and uh, just be happy and look forward to the New Year. Try and be the best, be the best you you can be. Successful, happy positive any any of those things and you should be fine for the new year so let's get straight into this guys another nba topic that i've been wanting to wanting to dis- discuss for a while but i've kind of had to help back on it because i just wanted to see how they would improve uh pretty much close to let's say halfway through of the season so with that being said let's get straight into this one so uh christmas day has passed and of course there's a few games on and of course, boxing there was a few games on as well. And of course, up until that point, basketball has been on consistently. So, with this team I'm going to talk about, they are actually the sleeper squad, and everybody thinks or thought they weren't capable. But this team is very capable. And that team is the Miami Heat. Now, the Miami Heat right now are definitely a squad that is ready to go uh, for a good jump. Now, of course, acquiring... Jimmy Butler over the summer period and of course losing Hassan Whiteside uh, you know they didn't know how well it was going to fit and of course um, you know Hassan Whiteside being uh, the tallest player on that team he was a centre and of course Jimmy Butler being the small forward now my my thought process was that well Miami are going to be playing a lot of small ball because the only centre they have left who's a rookie is uh, Bam Adebayo he's 6 foot 10 but he has been performing he's been defending uh, scoring and he, he's just he's better he's been better than a lot of people have expected another guy also as well is Tyler Hero he's been better than a lot of people expected of course um, Kendrick Nunn who has been pretty much under the radar for a lot of people and of course uh, their starting point guard which is Goran Dragic who is I still think is a good point guard probably over his prime now but he can still uh, go down the floor get a shot up and of course um playmaker playmaker with the team so he's a really good playmaker so with, it, with that being said the miami heat look like they have the pieces to put a, they've really got the pieces to put together to put together a strong team now of course with the miami heat now um a lot of people are wondering what can they do against teams like um let's say the milwaukee bucks or the los angeles lakers for that with that matter if there was to, if there was a finals appearance now or a conference finals appearance. Well, I think because um, it's still too early and the playoffs is still, let's say, a couple of months away, I still think Miami have a lot to prove. They've got a lot, le- lot left in the tank. And, you know, not only have they got their starting players, they've also got a good bench core. They've got a good, really good young core that, you know, Miami have been building through the draft. And no one's noticed this. Every- all these guys are pretty much sleepers. Except for Jimmy Butler, of course, him, he is a well known, established NBA player pretty much a star and he's just helped adapt this team to become so much better it's probably not as good as lebron Dwayne wade chris bosh that sort of effect of course because that though that was a trio but at the end of the day he's coming he's joined this team and he's able to help this team out i mean i know, I know a lot of people were looking i know a lot of people were looking for miami what they're going to do now um in terms of who's going to be the next sort of Dwayne wade and i think um not so much Jimmy Butler can fill that spot, but he is pretty much close to actually replicating uh, some things that Dwayne Wade actually did, even after losing LeBron and uh, obviously Chris Bosh. But the only thing I can say that's different is that when, when Dwayne Wade was there, um, they, the Heat were very struggling. Of course, you know, Dwayne Wade being out of his prime, you know, he wasn't the prime scorer or athletic guy he used to be. So it's just one of those things that really lacked for the Miami Heat but they've been able to build they've been able to um keep keep the same momentum and they've consistently been been out of the playoffs for for the last couple of years but they have tried to fight back in and and their record shows that um you know they have they have had 40 plus wins and 30 plus losses for the last couple of years and I'm thinking well that is pretty good for a team that is just about that is just getting kicked out of the playoffs of the eighth seeding so that's still good you know and it's just giving them time to rebuild and get their strengths up. And now they've acquired a star. They've got a good young court and they are rolling. So, 
I'm just going to try and understand where their record is now. So their record right now is is a 24 to 9. And that is really good. That's really good for an East team. I think the East have actually become a little bit better in terms of um, strengthening their teams and trying to get a good record over 500. So yeah, the East are very good. You know, um, they're only one game behind the Boston Celtics. And of course, um, they are pretty much four games behind the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, my interesting thing for the rest of the season is that the Heat will only just, they'll keep on striving. And I think the consistency is there. It shows, definitely shows on their road wins, their home wins, and they, 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 the team is capable. The team is very capable enough to just build up a number of wins and, you know, use their players that they've got. Um, one thing I do respect about the Heat as well, they've stuck with the same coach, Eric Spolscher, who I think is a really good coach. They've just stuck with him and they've, you know, they have not, they're not like other teams just getting rid of coaches because, oh, it doesn't fit. It doesn't work out for one year. It doesn't work out for a couple of years. Oh, what's he going to do after LeBron and D-Wade go? So, you know, he's been with that team for a while and I don't see the Heat changing anytime soon. Um, if they do change him, it will surprise me. It will, it will really surprise me because the wins he's been able to, to bring to the table and of course the championships, you can't go no wrong with that answer. So that's the thing with the Heat I can say. But um I think I think I'm I'm interested in all the players in terms of that team anyway. Jimmy Butler, Bam, um of course Tyler Hero, Kendrick Nunn, and one guy who's been kind of like um I don't know if he's for me, I feel I feel like he is. He's still a capable guy, but he hasn't really made um, a loud approach as I thought he did in his first season, and that is Justice Winslow. Now, Justice Winslow, he's a six five, six five um, small forward. You know, you can't put him at the point guard. I remember last year when um, Goran Dragic was out for injuries, uh, they put him at the point guard, and he was actually he was holding his own. He was definitely holding his own, and. Um, all I can say about that is that when players like him have a lot to prove because there's nothing left for the team to do, he will he will start to go off. He'll, he'll make good passes, good scoring opportunities for everyone, including himself. And that's just one of the things that I like about Justice Winslow as well. Even though he's a small forward, he's a tough small forward as well. When you see him at the small forward position, he's very tough. He's a good defender. Um, of course, he's still got more time. And I think obviously since Jimmy Butler coming into the mix, with also with Bam, uh, Tyler and Kendrick Nunn, of course, you know, one person or a few people will take uh, a step back and kind of just, you know, uh, be there in the background, but they but they know that their role is still certain to that team. And I think that's one of those things that Justin Winslow has had to do. And of course, you know, he's still young. Like I said, he's got enough time in this league to prepare and, you know, bounce, not so much bounce back, bounce back from his rookie year, but continue to progress from his rookie year. So hopefully behind the scenes, he's putting in that extra work and we're able to see more from him. So going back to what I said before, what can the Miami Heat do against certain teams, against the Los Angeles Lakers or maybe even the Milwaukee Bucks, even the Boston Celtics for that matter, because they are in the East. Now, I'm looking at the East now and of course, uh, the Toronto Raptors, who were, who were once first are now obviously, um, I think they are uh, six, I think. Maybe I might be wrong on this one, but yep. Um, I feel like with the Heat now, they have, there's not much pressure on them to actually, to see, to even do anything in the playoffs. So if they get knocked out of the first round, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit it's a bit sad, I'm sure, but it's not going to be anything crazy. You know, whereas certain teams uh, like the Milwaukee Bucks, Boston Celtics, they're expected to go, they're expected to at least win every round because of the team they have and the players they've got, you know. Um, and that's the one thing I realised about the Heat is that they are just focused on playing basketball. That like, They're just so focused on playing good basketball that, you know, the record, the record shows what they do. It definitely shows what they do. And of course, the chemistry is there as well. Um, Jimmy Butler, of course, connecting with everybody. Because I remember when he was on the um, t Minnesota Timberwolves the season before, um, he was buying heads with the team. And of course, the head executives as well. But I think 
the only reason Jimmy did that is because he's a passionate player and I can see that he just wants to win. Like, he really does want to win. And, you know, of course, when you said the comments about the Minnesota Timberwolves team saying, oh, these guys are young, but they don't want to win anything. And, you know, a lot of young guys that come into the league right now, they don't want to win anything in the first couple of years. They just really stay dormant, you know, which is probably the reasons why he called out Andrew Ringens not being productive. So I can understand that. Or even Cat, you know, taking certain things as a joke. Like, I can understand where he's coming from. But I can also understand that they are young and they don't get it yet. Once they hit their prime, they will understand that this is what they need to do to win games. So, you know, by Jimmy being like that, of course, send, they sent him off to the Sixers. He did really well in the Sixers. I thought he was going to resign. But I felt like that team was very stacked anyway in terms of stars. So, you know, we, we didn't even know if it was going to be like a, enough for Jimmy to stay. Now, I think... Um, was Jimmy a good fit on the Sixers? Yes. Um, do you feel like he could have stayed another season to help the Sixers win? Um, yes, as well. But him going to the Heat actually made it a bit more interesting because now, because everybody thought he was going to be there by himself. You know, what's he going to do? He's going to be producing all the points and scoring and everything else. But then, what about the other players? So, in, in that sort of sense, really and truly, Jimmy possibly did the best thing for himself and his career to show that he can bring up a he can lead a team. He's he's a he's a full blown leader, and and to see his team striving the way he wants to, it's great. Now, of course, could they produce this next season? We don't know. The NBA is very unpredictable the way it is now with the duos, but he's proven a lot, especially with Jimmy. Now he's on the East. The East has been weak for some time. Let's be honest. But, but there are teams that still keep the East um, at the strength that it is, you know. But there's there's just a lot of weaknesses with the East and with the rest of the teams. Now, the way that the way the way to change it, well, you could say they need more stars over there. Yeah, I, I get. It. But some of the some of the cities that you play in, they're not as wanted. Miami is a team that you know. If you hear Miami, players would would want to go there, just because it's Miami. So. Yeah, but back to what I said before. Um, yeah, so teams like let's say for example the Milwaukee Bucks, if they if um if, if you're to face up against them, how do you you know stop a guy like Giannis Antetokounmpo? Now, of course, Giannis being six ten, the Greek freak, of course. Um, how do you stop a guy like him? I know Jimmy Butler, he's a he's a really good defender, really good. Um, but it's just how do you stop a guy like him? It is tough as hard as it is. You, you pretty much have to get a center on him. But even when you do that, he still attacks the basket and still goes up strong. Now, of course, Giannis has improved his game. He's got a mid-range. He's starting to get a, a better three-point shoot out. Sorry. He's starting to get a better three-point shoot shooting. Um, and now it's just, well, well, how do you stop him now? He's got he's, he's getting an arsenal. Now, if Jimmy can work out how to stop him, then pretty much you are set on probably beating them or getting a game seven in the playoffs. As in a season, you could beat him if they're doing load management. But um, in a playoff game, it's tough. It is very tough to see. And it's going to be interesting when it comes to the playoffs. I do want to see how the Miami Heat do. They're definitely going to be one of the teams in the East to watch because um, I've been watching their ball games for the last... Um, for the last a few weeks to a month now and I'm just like wow they're really they're really impressive they are really impressive now I would have never have guessed this at the start of the season for them to be where they are but it just shows that one player can actually sometimes make a difference so you know they're utilizing Jimmy Butler well they're getting the young guys in more involved and also the young guys are performing these guys were the, the funny thing is about Tyler Hero is that um I didn't, uh, me personally, I didn't really hear much about him. Kendrick Nunn was the same thing, but they've come in and they've done what they needed to do. Now, you know, it's all, it's all well and good, you know, being a guy like John, John Morant, who's a really good player, don't get me wrong, or even RJ Barrett, who was high in the draft, but to see the Heat actually really trying to rebuild and go for different, different players is just like, well, this is what you need to do to win. This is what you need to do. Um, this is and to a lot of lower lower tier teams, I would be taking note because I can't you know draft high, get the best player, 
for one team and then not be successful, which is why I think um, the Phoenix Suns are are not doing so great. But that's another story or another topic I would like to touch on later. But yeah, Miami, I just want to say, uh, you know, definitely to Miami fans as well, get ready for the playoffs because I think these guys are not going to stop winning. So they're going to be consistent. Going up against a team like the Boston Celtics, it's going to be interesting. And I'm not seeing, and I'm, I'm definitely want to see a game. I can't wait to see another game between them, um, the Celtics and the Heat heat because it's interesting now they you know there is players on both ends of, the, of that of those two teams ready to go for it all you know you've got a good matchup with Goran Dragic going up against Kemba Walker of course you've got um, Al Horford against Bam you've got Jimmy Butler against uh, Gordon Hayward now you know it's you've got good matchups here and good players ready to go ready to take that risk so yeah overall uh, the Miami Heat, all I can say is that I've been really impressed. Uh, if you haven't seen any of their games, make sure you check out their highlights. Just I would say one specific thing you could watch about a Miami Heat game is just kind of watch the young core and watch the ball movement and the shooting. Watch every aspect of, of the game, from shooting, passing, dribbling, and of course the, the ball movement and the spacing. Because I think it's really interesting what they do, especially when they're winning games. So... Um, so you know, I think um, I, I'm I'm guessing their record, their record could get to the high forties slash early fifties. You know, I don't see them getting. I don't see their record going um, maybe past past sixty or even to the high fifties for that matter. But their record will be high at the end of the season without a doubt. They could even become second if they wanted to. Now that's the thing. I'm you know that I'm, I want to see is that the Heat. You know, can they possibly be B second? I don't think they could be first because of the more bucks, how strong they are. But I do think that they can be second. So if, if they have, if they be second, it kind of gives them an edge for that first two rounds. You know, where and it gives the Celtics less of a, less of an advantage because of home court. And of course, everybody knows who loves basketball. Home court advantage is so important to the league right now, especially if like you're first, you're second. Uh, when you're third, fourth to six, it is tough. It is tough. Even seventh and eighth, you know, playing on the road is tougher than it is playing at home. And that's why I think um, some of the best teams, you know, can uh, can win on the road. Because I think with the Heat right now as well, they are nine for eight on the road. Nine for eight on the road. And they are 15 to one. Look at that, 15 to one at home. So it's, it's definitely, there is definitely a reason why people say they prefer home games. Of course, it's you're in your own environment. So yeah, <clears throat> I think that's pretty much what I wanted to say, guys, before um, we head off into the new year. Um, that's it for the podcast. Of course, make sure you check out my other podcast as well. I will leave, uh, obviously, a link down below as well. If you haven't seen a playlist, of course, I'll leave it at the end, leave it at the end of the video. So yeah, guys, don't forget to like, share, comment, and to subscribe. Um, also, happy new year. Just in case, if you don't hear from me, everyone, Twitter on my socials. And I'll see you for the next one. Peace.